Okay, so we're going to start discussing electrons and their properties. And this is going to be an important foundation for um, most of the rest of chemistry because all of the chemical bonds that will form compounds, molecules, chemical reactions, all of that has to do with the number of electrons that an atom or an ion has. So if we remember kind of this false representation of an atom where you have the nucleus in the middle and inside the nucleus you have the protons and the electrons and then orbiting the nucleus kind of like the planets orbit the sun we would find the electrons however many there are so inside the nucleus are the protons and the neutrons and then orbiting the nucleus are the electrons so we said this really isn't the most correct way to think about an atom and we're going to talk about that more in this chapter so the number of electrons in the outermost shell, so this, if each of these lines represented what we call a shell, which is like an energy level where these electrons can be. So you see the first shell has two electrons and then the next shell, one, two, three, four, five, has five electrons. So those five electrons in the outermost shell, those are the electrons that are going to be available to form any bonds with other atoms. So we really need to understand electrons and their properties so that we can understand bonds and chemical reactions and really everything else in chemistry. So that's what we're talking about in chapter three. So um, electrons are orbiting the nucleus and they're negatively charged and they have something called wave particle duality. So what that means is that there's no one way to really describe an electron completely. Electrons sometimes behave, they have some properties that behave like waves and some properties that behave like particles. So we say electrons have wave particle duality. So there's not really a good way to explain electrons as a wave and a particle together. So what we'll do is we'll explain electrons as waves in the first few lectures and then we'll talk about how electrons are particles in the last few and then we'll see kind of how this really shows a complete picture of an electron. So when we're talking about waves um, there are two important characters characteristics of waves that we need to be familiar with. The first is wavelength. And wavelength has this symbol here, this lambda. And what a wavelength is, is it's a distance from the point of one wave to the point of another wave. I'm going to say distance to identical points on adjacent waves. So what does that mean? So we'll say if here was my wave, a wavelength would be from, like if we were looking at the bottom of the wave, this distance here would be the wavelength. Or you could do from any identical part, any, any two identical parts on adjacent waves. What, <clears throat> wavelength is a distance, so we're going to need some unit of distance. The unit of distance that we typically use for wavelength, just because it makes sense with all of the other scales that we're going to be talking about, the unit for wavelengths that we typically use is nanometers. So if you remember back to our prefixes from chapter 1, 1 nanometer equals 1 times 10 to the negative ninth meters, or it's the same thing as saying 1 meter equals 1 times 10 to the ninth 
nanometers. So a nanometer is very small. It's one, there's one times 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. So um, just make sure you're paying attention to units because most of the time when you're solving for wavelength, it will ask for a wavelength in nanometers. Whoops. <laughs> Um, okay, so the next important property of waves that we need to talk about is frequency. Well, I should have put the symbol first. Frequency, it's kind of like this tilted V here. And what frequency is, is it's kind of like a rate it's the number of wavelengths that pass a fixed point in one unit of time, usually seconds. So that time, that unit for time is usually seconds. And the unit is usually one over seconds, or that's the same thing as saying seconds to the minus one, or if this was a physics class, you probably would call it a hertz. All of those are the same unit. We will probably use seconds to the minus one is the one that is most commonly seen in the textbook. Any of those are correct. So the relationship between frequency and wavelength is that their product equals the speed of light. So the speed of light is a constant. Its um, unit is C. The speed of light in your textbook is given as 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So the formula is that the speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency. So you can always use this constant and the wavelength to solve for the frequency, or you can use this constant and the frequency to solve for the wavelength. One important thing to keep in mind here is that wavelength is usually in nanometers and the speed of light, the constant, is in a unit of meters. So when you're using wavelength and this speed of light equation, you'll need to convert nanometers to meters, one of these two ways. So we'll see some examples of that. Let's do an example. Okay, let's say what is the wavelength in nanometers of blue light with a frequency of 6.4 times 10 to the 14th, one over seconds. So again, you could see any unit here, any of these three, one over seconds, seconds to the minus one, or hertz. Any of those are equivalent. So we're solving for wavelength. We're given the frequency. And we know the speed of light, C, is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if I'm solving for wavelength, I'm just going to rearrange this equation. I'm going to divide both sides by the um, frequency, so I'm gonna say wavelength equals speed of light over frequency. 
So the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second over the frequency, 6.4 times 10 to the 14th, one over seconds, one over seconds and then seconds on the top, these will cancel. So let's just put this in the calculator. Make sure to use parentheses whenever you're using exponents or it'll apply that exponent to everything. So I'm gonna say 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 6.4 times 10 to the 14th. And I get with two significant figures because my frequency had two significant figures, 4.7 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So the question didn't ask for the wavelength in meters, it asked for the wavelength in nanometers. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll convert meters to nanometers. I'm gonna say one meter is the same as one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. Meters will cancel. Now I'm gonna take my answer, multiply it by one times 10 to the ninth, and with two significant figures, I get 470 nanometers. So that would be my answer. That is the wavelength for a wave that has a frequency of 6.4 times 10 to the 14th. So that's an example of using wavelength and frequency and speed of light. Let's look at one more example. Let's do an example where we're solving for frequency when we are given the wavelength. Okay, so let's say what is the frequency of light having a wavelength of 681 nanometers. Uh, one thing I just want to say um, really quickly is that you might see some questions in your SmartWorks homework where it asks you what color of light um, something with a wavelength like this would have. So this um, length wavelength is in the visible light spectrum. So you see it says, what is the wavelength of blue light? So there is a chart, there's a picture in your textbook and in the lecture slides. It's actually number 10 on the, on the lecture slide. And it shows the visible spectrum of light. And if you look here in 470 nanometers, you'll see that's the blue range. That's not something you need to memorize. Um, it's not something I'm going to ask you on a test, but it's probably something that some of the questions on the SmartWorks homework will ask you. So you'll use your textbook or the PowerPoint slides as a resource if it asks you what color light comes from that wavelength. Okay, let's go back to this question. What is the frequency of light having a wavelength of 681 nanometers? So again, let's write down what we are looking for. So we are asked what is the frequency. We are given the wavelength is 681 nanometers, and we know the speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So <clears throat> again, I'm gonna rearrange this equation, but I'm gonna solve for frequency this time. So I'm gonna say frequency equals the speed of light divided by wavelength. Well, I know that my unit for the speed of light is in meters and my unit for wavelength is in nanometers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is convert nanometers to meters. So I'm gonna do that um, over here. So I'm gonna say 681 nanometers. That's not very good, but 681 nanometers and I wanna convert it to meters. So I'm gonna say there's one times 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. So now I'm dividing by one times 10 to the ninth. So I'm gonna have 681 divided by one times 10 to the ninth, and I get 6.81 times 10 to the seventh. So negative seventh meters. So this is the number that I'm gonna use 
6.81 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. This is the number that I'm gonna use for the wavelength so that I can solve for the frequency. So let's say frequency equals speed of light 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second over my uh, wavelength that is in the correct unit of meters, 6.81 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Meters will cancel. My answer is going to be in one over seconds. So let's say 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 6.81 times 10 to the negative seventh. And I get about four point with three significant figures this time 4.40 times 10 to the 14th one over seconds or seconds to the minus one or hertz whatever you want but that would be the frequency with a wavelength of that distance so this is using wavelength and frequency and speed of light to find out information about waves. Again, we're learning about waves because electrons have some properties of waves. So we need to learn about these waves first and then we're gonna apply it to electrons.